We're here today at St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran School, and we're going to see the wonderful things going on at this school. Come join us. Let's go inside and see what's going on. <laughs> You. Hey Dennis, how are you doing? Great, great. Great to see you, Paul. And this is uh, Paul Lutze, and you are the principal here at uh, St. Peter Evangelical Lutheran Church School. Correct. And uh, we're here at this beautiful vestibule. What a, what a great welcoming place. What a warm, uh, lovely place this is. And as we come into the school, the first thing we notice is this very remarkable mural that's behind us. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it is quite, uh, quite the, quite the mural. Quite Let's the project. turn this way. Yeah. This um, mural was designed by one of our members, Paula Roberts, and uh, the mural was actually made in Italy with Italian tile, and it is showing the connection between uh, old. Old Jerusalem up in the in the top corner there and present day Sturgeon Bay bridged together by the old Sturgeon Bay Bridge. Good metaphor and we have uh, the Jesus figure of course with St. Peter in his boat and we're we're tying St. Peter to uh, to the time of Jesus and uh, the old bridge is, is, has a prominent place there as well. Yes and uh, Having St. Peter in there, I guess, is kind of fitting since we are St. Peter's Lutheran Church. Perfectly so. done. Now, just a, just a rhetorical question. Yes. If, do you think if Jesus were here personally today and physically, he would choose to go across the bay in St. Peter's little leaky boat or along the bridge? My guess is he'd walk on water. Or <laughs> even uh, the best option he'd have. This is quite a remarkable piece. So... A, a parishioner designed this and it was contracted in Italy and what a beautiful piece and very welcoming and a, a very lovely statement and metaphor for welcoming guests to your school. Thank you. Thank you. And we're here in the library at St. Peter uh, Lutheran School, and we're with the esteemed principal, uh, Paul Litze, again. And Paul, uh, this is really a great place, and I see many, uh, a great variety of volumes on the walls. Tell me, uh, first of all, how St. Peter's School came to an ex into existence, and how long it's been here in the community. St. Peter's School started in, for the school year of 1983-84. That recent. So it's been 29 years now. This is the 29th year of the school. And there was a group of parents that really wanted to have full-time Christian education for their kids and uh, have been pushing it for a number of years and it finally passed at the congregational level and, and they started the school. So. Um, let me uh, try to understand this. Is it um, sort of a, uh, a broad uh, faith-based um, community effort throughout the peninsula and area or particularly through this parish? Through this parish, just through St. Peter's congregation. My goodness. Uh, they support um, the school financially. Oh, I would say about 75% of it, if not a little bit more, comes from the congregation itself, and the rest comes from tuition. Very supportive and speaks very well to the definitely, people here. Definitely. And so how, what was your background, and how did you come to St. Peter's? Well, I grew up in Manitowoc, and my, my father was a, a teacher at Manitowoc Lutheran High School, and so I went to uh, Dr. Martin Luther College in New Ulm, Minnesota, which is the Wisconsin Synod's teacher training college and uh, when I graduated from there uh, my first calling was to help some missionary congregations throughout uh, the United States doing surveys and knocking Good. on doors and things like that and then I have got the call to St. Peter's here uh, back in 84 85 school year so I've been here for 28 years now my goodness a young man you must have Thank started you. when you were 10 just about <laughs> yeah so what was the motivating factor for you to be a teacher did was your father's influence uh, in, in respect of him 
Uh, did that lead to, uh, to your motivation or? It, it definitely had an influence on me, uh, probably not the way you'd expect it to. Um, growing up in, in, a, in a teacher's home and having sisters, older sisters that wanted to be teachers, being a teacher was the last thing I wanted to I do. See. Uh, but because that's what I grew up with, I really didn't know anything else. And uh, I wanted to play football in college, and I knew I could at, uh, at Martin Luther, and here I am. Wonderful. So the Lord definitely well, moves you in different ways. The, the community is certainly fortunate to have you here, Paul. So tell me now, you know, the, the school systems in Door County, and in Sturgeon Bay in particular, are, are quite good systems uh, that turn out and have some wonderful students and good family support and a lot of great programs. How does this school differ and what, what specifically makes it a special place? We, we differ in, in one way and it permeates pretty much everything that we do. Um, yes, we are a Lutheran school and we teach uh, the, the Christian faith from, from a Lutheran perspective. Um, but it's not just a religion class that we have at the beginning of the day, which we do have. It's not just uh, Bible history lessons, uh, prayers at mealtimes and things like that. Everything we teach is definitely from a biblical perspective. Um, a reading class, we may talk about uh, uh, euthanasia in a reading class and we can talk about it from a Christian perspective. Um, so there, there's a lot of things that are influenced by our faith in how we teach. So you are therefore helping your students to think with the influence of the of your beliefs and uh, uh, but of world issues and uh, helping them to understand for their futures uh, what is appropriate in our democracy uh, to work for or perhaps have voice sure. uh, the other way. Sure, when, when we uh, talk United States history and, and uh, the, the founding fathers and our role as citizens to, to have a voice in the government and, and to vote and to uh, obey the government because that's what the Lord told us to do, to obey your governments. And uh, um, really doing what the Lord wants us to do here at St. Peter's. Um, Paul, now this, this is a, uh, an, an exceptional place. We'll be viewing more of it shortly. Um, how many students do you have here? We have 84 students in our preschool through eighth grade. And they come from a variety of backgrounds? Definitely. Um, most of our kids are, are from the St. Peter's congregation, but we have non-members as well. We have um, some kids that are, are from, uh, have Baptist backgrounds, some that have uh, Assembly of God. I mean, they're, they're from different backgrounds that come here. Um, some that really don't have religion at home at all. Mm -hmm. And so the parents who choose that, choose to come here, see this as a positive influence in their child's life and see the good organization here and they wish to have their kids have part of that. Definitely. Um, and and it's, it's interesting because some parents will bring their kids here because they see the smaller class sizes or they see the um, respect and so on that the kids have for one another and for their teachers. And uh, they kind of uh, see the, the kids' faith grow and they quite often stay for the duration. Excellent. Um, obviously, you know, our tax dollars pay for our public education or at least attempt to pay mm -hmm. for it. And we can argue about how those monies are spent from time to time. Um, and so all of us are taxpayers, your congregation included. And what if one of your congregation or someone from outside your congregation wishes sees this as value, there, it, there's obviously additional expense 
that needs to be to come mm. into school. And if the desire is strong, but the means are meager, are there programs here to help those kinds of people? Definitely. We had um, a very generous family a number of years back um, give their estate to St. Peter's and set, set up an endowment fund. We call it our Christian Education Endowment Fund. That any of our, of our members who want Christian education, whether it's here at the grade school level or to go to a Lutheran high school such as Manitowoc Lutheran or Fox Valley Lutheran, or even to go to a Lutheran college like I did to become a pastor or teacher, this endowment fund will help pay for their tuition. Well, and, they, and it's been fantastic. that's a huge power and a great most, help. Most definitely. Good. And what percentage of your student population are able or uh, are needing to take, take advantage of that endowment? Um, don't really have a percentage. I would say maybe maybe 10 percent have yeah. applied at different times great super super paul this is a great place and we're really looking forward to having you guide us through some more of it and uh we'll be talking some more as we go through your wonderful hallways thank so you sounds good school with beautiful decorations around us and one of the great uh, people who helps teach the children of this community uh, Miss Becky Mrs. Becky Toma how are you today Becky I'm great thank great, you great and what grade is uh, your focus this year Becky I teach kindergarten full-time my goodness that is full-time it's time and a half isn't it <laughs> it can be it yes can. So how did you choose, first of all, to be a teacher and then focus on the kindergarten group? Well, you know, ever since I was little, I loved teaching and the idea of being with kids. And so as I grew up, um, that's what I really wanted to do. And I, I felt the Lord put it in my heart strongly that um, it was what I was called to do. So um, I got to go to college for that. and. Um, I really enjoy the little ones because they give you lots of love and lots of hugs and you can't beat that and I love my job coming to school every day and seeing their smiling faces and getting lots of love and giving lots of love in return. And, and what a great thing you do because we all need that, we all need that reaffirmance and um, reaffirmation perhaps is a better word and also you, c you are so instrumental in forming early attitudes and uh, early feelings with these children and early security about the idea of what is school and how to be comfortable in school. You know, it is true and it's an honor and a privilege and I don't take it lightly because, you know, every child that walks in that door, I want them to first and foremost know they're loved and then to come to know the love of their Savior. And it is such a joy to be able to do that every day. Oh, it's a great, privilege. great. Well, they're, they're certainly fortunate. We see a lot of art projects here in the hall, and I see one right behind us. This, of course, is uh, today is President's Day, uh, and um, I see various silhouettes, and I think you could probably identify them uh, quite well for us. And who, what grade did this project, and how was it inspired? Well, we did that just today. We talked about our first president, George Washington, and then we included our 16th, which is Abraham Lincoln, and learned some facts about them and, of course, how life was so different for them. And, you know, there's no TV. There's <laughs> no any of those kind of gadgets that they play with every day. So it's nice for them to see the difference and then think about what life would be like as, you know, one of those 
presidents that had lived long before we do. And, and the greatness of the men and the Absolutely. greatness of their foundations Absolutely. and how they helped to give us the, the civil freedoms to have a great school like St. Peter's here in our community and have those choices to come to a school like St. Peter's if we wish to. So true, and we did definitely talk about that and how God is so good and how those men encouraged freedom and the wonderful country we have is based upon a lot of what they believed. And, and it's ongoing and changing uh, continuously. So this was part of your kindergarten project. Right. My Just goodness, today. these kids are very talented uh, cutters and pasters. What kind of a volunteer program do you have for the parents of, these, of the children at the different levels? Well, truthfully, as they come into my classroom, I kind of just commandeer them and ask them, would you be willing to help with whatever things as they come up? And I have a little volunteer list, and they're very kind about signing up for things and volunteering their time. We do many field trips, and they're good about driving to the field trips. And, you know, so many activities that we're involved in, they are a part of, too. So it builds that bond between, you know, home and school and helps everybody know it's a community of it, learners. It's sad that so much of our societal educational program is just somewhat the opposite in which school is to learn and home is to parent, whatever that means, as opposed to accepting part of that mutual responsibility and um, uh, mutual duty to help to extend the school into the home and the home into the school. That's so true, and it is such an important thing to know that there is that teamwork that always happens from little on, and it really shouldn't end, you know, because parents are so important and instrumental as our teachers, but it's all, all working together. That's what I tell my 30 and 34 year old. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Can we come into your classroom perhaps? Uh, thank you, Absolutely. please lead the way. <laughs> Oh, and what do, what do pirates say? Arr! Very good. Arr, my matey! Aye, me matey. Very good. Hi! And Becky, we're in your beautiful classroom, uh, very organized, full of uh, beautiful activities for the kids. I see music. I see play areas, I see work tables, and behind us is something that's new in most classrooms, I believe, a, a smart board. Right. It is a wonderful gift and blessing. Almost all of the classrooms have one, and we can utilize it by um, doing touch-sensitive things so the kids can, you know, manipulate and, and do things really quickly and easily, and that hands-on learning, and it's so big and bright and beautiful right in front of them. And kids are so visual these days with all of the other activities they have at home with TV and video games that this brings some learning to life for so them. So for those of us who are uh, of, the, of two centuries ago, um, can you describe this to the viewing audience of what exactly it is and its purpose in learning here in the classroom? Well, basically it's a computer and whatever you could do on a computer, you can do on a smart board. And uh, what's nice, though, is it is touch, touch sensitive, so you can, you know, manipulate it and use it. And uh, we do lots of games and activities and show videos, which are up close and personal then. And uh, it just is so much more exciting for the kids and a, what a huge blessing. What a wonderful piece of equipment that combines overhead projectors, projectors, right. uh, uh, easels, uh, chalkboards. Amazing. Right. Right. And, so this was a gift, you say, from a uh, parent group? Well, or? we had um, technology monies, and uh, right, it was a kind gift then given to all of the classrooms that we can utilize, and a huge, huge asset. Terrific. So how do you see your place as a teacher and uh, here at St. Peter's in the future? How do you see that changing or developing? Well, I'm just going to continue to do my best to God's glory and give my best to the children because I love them dearly and uh, it's a privilege and honor to do what I'm doing and 
we'll continue to do the best we can and work as a team. And I'm praying that little by little we're, we're growing this school and more children can come to know Jesus. Well, it's a privilege and blessing to speak with you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Be well. And we're here in a, a, a wonderful, unique feature uh, of St. Peter's School. Uh, their sunroom or solarium that's positioned well between their classrooms and their church, sort of a causeway where parents can wait uh, for their children, where uh, parents and teachers and students can have little mini conferences, but just a beautiful space to come to. And we're with uh, two of the wonderful parents uh, from St. Peter's. Uh, we're here with uh, Kurt Stuber and Brenda Bilski, and it's good to see you both today. Thanks Thank for you. being here. And so this is such a unique school. We're seeing all these um, wonderful civic and academic and biblical connections going on throughout the school, um, which is um, um, not unique in America, but certainly wonderfully executed here in Sturgeon Bay at St. Peter's. How did you two as parents, Brenda, um, choose St. Peter's for your children? Um, well, I was born and raised at this church, so it was kind of a no-brainer for me to bring my child to come here for um, as, a, as a choice for a school. and. Um, it's a small school, which I like the idea of a smaller classroom. And um, everybody is so close and they, um, it's just very comfortable and I, I just enjoy the small atmosphere. And it's certainly obvious that there's great connection and personalization of the teachers with the students here. Uh, it was very obvious in our visit today. Kurt, obviously, um, there are considerations in life, practical considerations all the time, and you're both hardworking people and taxpayers and uh, many Americans. And as I was growing up and as it evolved, it seemed that Americans by and large um, took for granted that education was a function of government somehow and maybe parental input or, or other organizational input was not on the forefront. So this is obviously a greater responsibility and burden for you, and yet the, the, the values you and your children are getting from this educational experience are, are what that, that you, would, um, you would choose to make that additional responsibility? Well, my wife and I felt that when we made the decision to have Emma come here, that being part of her education and being able to be more part of her education was important. And the smaller school environment was much more conducive to that. Um, we both enjoy being able to participate more closely with the teachers, but also with the administration and feeling as though there's more of an opportunity for input from us as to how our daughter is educated and and uh, and just to be much more of a part of it than than a bigger institution. Yeah, can you give us any examples of specific input that perhaps you've had or exchange with teachers that's uh, that has helped your daughter um, uh, grow in this academic uh, situation? Well. My wife helps to organize some volunteers with the playground uh, in, the, uh, in the mornings, which allows the teacher to have some additional time with uh, some of the other kids. And it, it really gives much more of a hands-on feel. Um, I myself am involved with the media lab and the technology. And in fact, uh, Brenda is, is helping uh, myself as well as a couple of other parents to, to develop some programs in that and to be 
initiating some things that uh, that is really just getting off the ground. So we're real pleased to be able to have that. Well, from what I've seen here at St. Peter's, once something gets off the ground, it soars. So I'm sure with uh, your help and your abilities, it's, it's going to, that whole process is going to go well. Brenda, what other kinds of things are uh, parents involved in here at St. Peter's that perhaps are unique, perhaps would not uh, occur in our public sector because of various reasons? Well, for me myself, I um, help out like with um, reading with the kindergartners and the third and fourth graders. Um, I'm sure in the public schools that also does go on, but for myself, that's what I help out with. And I also help with the recess duty and the computer lab and stuff, um, which I enjoy doing quite a bit. And, um, and there's just, you know, I'm not sure as to what other parents help out with, but I do find that a lot of the parents do assist other teachers with various little projects and stuff or helping out. I know when we were, when our children were in the kindergarten, we did help out like Mrs. Tomo with various little projects and stuff and with field trips and various. She mentioned there's a lot of yes, parents doing that. Yes. yes, exactly. Various little art projects and stuff like that, which is nice to. So, you know, how can a child not have a winning experience here if they are being supported well at home? You have such a, a warm personal uh, faculty and a well-oiled um, uh, facility here, how, you know, how could a child not have high benefit by going, is that, uh, I, I, I just don't see it as, uh, as a possibility. I mean, parental support, uh, you don't divorce yourself from the educational process as so many Americans tend to want to do and just maybe complain about it. Uh, you're taking an active part. So it's a community school, yet there are people from outside your specific community that are here yes. as well. Um, what things for the future do you see as potential for the growth of St. Peter's and the student, Kurt? Well, and s just stepping back a, a little bit too, um, you know, I, I think we felt that having God back in the classroom and be in the school and just inherently the maybe the the idea of 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 focusing on family values on christian values and and in some respects some of those things that the public schools have had to take out for various reasons, mandated to for reasons, that, yeah. and 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 maybe I don't understand completely why those things are that way and uh, and that, but uh, yet they are, and so I, I think, you know, in, in not having had a public school experience, um, I can only speak to our experience here at St. Peter's and the future, and and I think it's it's the future is sort of part of the present. It's. Um, the willingness to get in and get involved, to make it what we want to make it as parents, as opposed to expecting administrators, boards, teachers to do the whole thing. And, and really the willingness as a parent to get in and be involved in that. Um, so that, you know, my child's one chance at this education uh, is fulfilled and she goes on into into life not not necessarily just to be making a lot of money or or uh, getting some great job which is certainly part of it but uh, you know that in itself isn't enough you've got to have family you've got to have good values I think to feel enriched and to feel fulfilled and and uh, our confidence is here at St. Peter's and that's why we're here. Well, very well articulated, both of you. Um, and it's, it's been a total joy to be here at St. Peter's and meet uh, some representative parents and uh, some wonderful teachers. Um, in this past week's Wall Street Journal, just by the way, there was a very interesting article, a very 
secular, uh, financially oriented uh, publication most of the time. And there was two full pages uh, devoted to the, the purpose and the feeling and the community that um, religion can play in a person's life on many dimensions as far as being connected, as far as, as uh, confidence in some ways. And you've articulated some of those things that they pointed out in this in this journal in the journal article quite well. So I want to thank you both for being with us today, and we're looking forward to St. Peter's continuing to follow the path of its great direction and grow, and looking forward to following these wonderful children on their lives and careers. Uh, through your, your great guidance. So thank you very much. And we're um, here at St. Peter's uh, Grade Schools, their, their um, computer lab. And you know, um, we're again with the, the, our principal, uh, Paul Litzke. And Paul, you know, I've, I've seen other school computer labs, private schools that are sort of hodgepodges of equipment and various models mm -hmm. and years and makes and degrees of operation. You've got very nice, serviceable, uniform equipment in here. Yes, we do. Uh, and, and we've been there before with the hodgepodge of, of equipment. Um, we were fortunate enough to be able to purchase 25 uh, new computers this summer and set up this lab. Uh, we did some rewiring of the building so we have uh, the faster uh, service to them and it's just been a real, real blessing to us. Now you have probably 30 units in here. There's, there's 25 in here right Pretty now. Pretty close yep. A yep. A estimation. And so I think we were talking a little while ago about the foresight that your, your committees, planners, or board had to set up kind of a fund and uh, sort of fees uh, in the past so that you could comfortably do this? Sure. We had, uh, we had a, a mobile lab with laptops uh, for a number of years, and at that time it cost quite a bit to, to purchase, and we had to raise that money. And at that time we decided to set up a technology fund. Uh, we charge our families a uh, $50 technology fee per family, not per student, but per family. And then we also use our Econo food receipts, our box tops for education, our, our milk cap uh, collection, and uh, the money we raise from that goes into our technology funds so that we can purchase the computers when we need to or the smart boards when we need to. Marvelous. And as I walk through the school, you're, um, I, I have not seen other private schools who have done as good and as cohesive a job as it seems that you've been able to do. Obviously, computers, at least mine at home, requires maintenance from time to time. And so you're doing teaching here, and the teaching uh, machines probably take a, take a harder beating than our home computers. Probably a little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, our seventh and eighth grade teacher, James Livingston, um, is also our technology guy, and he kind of keeps them running for us. Uh, when we run into bigger problems, we have a couple of different people in the congregation that we go to uh, for help. Um, if it's too big for us, we take them down to Camera Corner in Green Bay. Okay, so you've got an in-house, again, uh, community support network to help you keep things up to date and running well, and help these students learn the, both the technology and through the technology, uh, all the intricate learning uh, tools that they need for tomorrow. Yes, and if it weren't for the uh, help of the parents and people in our congregation, we wouldn't be able to do this, uh, either the raising of the money or keeping the equipment running. Fascinating place, wonderful man, great energy and spirit, and we thank you so much for having us this afternoon. Thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. you very much.
We've had a great day today at St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran School. We visited the students, their classrooms, this fine facility. Uh, we've got to meet their wonderful principal and some of their teachers. And we just like to leave you today to um, perhaps all of us give thanks to the great facilities and the dedication of our educators in Door County and the good things being done for our students. Till next time. So what do you like about St. Peter's? Um, they teach about Jesus Christ here.